This is the walkthrough for the Relationships and Biodiversity Lab for the Living Environment. So in this lab, they give you a hypothetical plant called Botanicurus, or BC, which produces a medicine called Cure-All, and it's your job to compare it to related species X, Y, and Z, and by doing a number of tests to see which of these three species is most closely related to Botanicurus, because maybe, in fact, these species are also going to produce this hypothetical medicine Cure-All. First test is a physical test comparing the structures of the leaves. Now, what you want to do is you want to look for things that are going to be either pointy or branched. That's probably the best way to draw the comparison. So with Botanicurus, you can see there's a lot of branches right here. Species X has no branches, but very, very pointy. Species Y has like these big chunks. I wouldn't really call them branches. Species Z has lots of branches, but also has a little pointy in the end there. So next we're going to compare the seeds. When you compare the seeds, what I want you to look at is, number one, the color. Which one is going to be most similar color to BC? Uh, you can see some of them are light beige, some of them are dark. And the second thing, you should look at the shape. So you can see this one's round, BC is long and flat, there's other ones long and flat, and some are super duper tall, small, and we can see, I don't know if they're flat or not, but they're definitely small. So it's not hard to see which one is going to be resembling BC. So the next physical test is going to be examining the cross-section of stems. The cross-section of the stems, looking at these microscopic structures called vascular tissue. Uh, Botanicurus is considered random. It's sort of scattered around. Species X, you can see right here, it's actually organized in these big bundles going around, forming a ring. So when you make a note of this, you've got to consider whether it's scattered or circular. So BC, I would say it's scattered. Species X is going to be circular. And you can see right here, this is another circular. And that looks pretty scattered to me. So you got to tell yourself which one is going to look closest to the Botanicurus. Up next, our first molecular comparison, chromatography. Chromatography is actually used to separate pigments. Each plant may contain different types of pigments, so if we could separate them, we could see what types of pigments are in that plant. So here's the hypothetical plants right here. This is the pigment blots, and we need to separate them using this chromatography paper. So we have it in order, B, C, X, Y, Z. So the way the chromatography works is we have to submerge one end in a solvent, and the solvent is, for example, water, and as water wicks up, kind of like being absorbed in a paper towel, it actually separates the pigments because the pigments do two things. One is they're going to be attracted to the paper in different ways, this chromatography paper, and it's, they're going to start separating at different speeds as the water moves up. So if we look at the data right here, B, C, X, Y, Z, you can see B, C, X, Y, and Z also all have blue, but there is a difference. Not only do you have to look at the colors, but you look, have to look at the, how far they traveled up. So this is actually uh, dried. The, uh, the water pr was probably around right here. It's called a solvent front. And we can see that the blue did not travel as far as the blue and the X. So it's probably a different shade of blue or type of blue. And then we have green and then we have red. So you got to make your comparison. Which one of these blots of this chromatography pattern looks most similar to BC? So you make the call and make your mental note. So now, guys, we're going to talk about indicators. Indicator. So an indicator is something that's going to change in the presence of something. Some indicators are going to change color. In this case, the indicator is going to bubble in the presence of enzyme M. So we take the indicator, we add it to the extract of BC, XYZ, and we look for the bubbling. So you can see right here, BC, there's definitely bubbling. X, there's bubbling. Z, there's bubbling. And Y, there is no bubble. So keep in mind, guys, that bubbling means it contains the enzyme. Finally, guys, the genetic comparisons, your favorite. So we'll begin by analyzing the genetic sequence and how it transcribes and translates into a protein for the three species comparing to Botanicurus. So the first line is a string of nucleotides. This is going to be a DNA code. You can tell it's DNA because it has the letters C, A, G, and T. There's no U's. In order to transcribe this into messenger RNA for these boxes right here, we have to deal with individual codons. Individual, an individual codon is just three nucleotides, okay? That's going to ultimately code for just one amino acid. So to get the messenger RNA codon, you just follow the base pairing rules, A with T, C with G, and whenever you see, whenever you're about to write a T, just change it to a U. Simple as that. So C goes with G, A goes with not T, but U, and then C goes with G. So then we look on the codon chart, and you read it on the first base, it's G. 
the second base is u, so all of the ones that start with g and u are right here in this box. So g, u, g is the amino acid VAL. And VAL stands for uh, valine. You do not have to know that. You just got to write in VAL. So for the first box right here, it's a CAC. The messenger RNA is GUG by the base pairing rules. And then it goes to the amino acid from that chart, which is VAL. So then what you got to do is just fill in the rest of these. And then what you can do is you count the number of differences that each one has compared to Botanicurus. So the idea is the less the differences in the amino acids, the more closely related it is to Botanicurus. Last test deals with some review of biotechnology techniques. So we're going to be looking at restriction enzymes and gel electrophoresis. So first up, what is a restriction enzyme? A restriction enzyme is an enzyme that's going to cut DNA at a restriction site. And a restriction site is a very specific of DNA where the restriction enzyme cuts. Here's CCGG. And in our lab, the restriction enzyme is going to cut right in between the C's and the G's. So wherever the enzyme recognizes a CCGG, cuts right in the middle, just like that. So what we have is strips of paper, okay? B, C, X, Y, Z, each have a different genetic sequence. We have to compare both the number of fragments produced from these cuts, as well as the size of each fragment, because each DNA is different. So for example, I see a CCGG there. I see a CCGG there, I see a CCGG here, and if you have a nice big Italian hero, my favorite, and you cut it in three p spots, that makes four pieces. Right here we have three cuts, that makes four pieces, and that we also have to consider how large each fragment is. So you just count them up. So this one's one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. So to answer the questions here, there's four fragments that are produced, and the number of nucleotides in each fragment, we have 5, 9, 11, and 12. That's the varying lengths of the fragments. So how do we analyze the DNA? Well, we use something called gel electrophoresis. Gel electrophoresis is a technique that's used to separate DNA fragments based on size. And since we cut the DNA in various sizes, this is going to simulate exactly how it does so. So this whole thing is an electrophoresis gel, and what you would do is you would load the DNA in these wells, and then as you apply electricity, the DNA is going to migrate down, and the smallest fragments will move the fastest. And the reason is, is because they have an easier time wiggling their way through the gel. So you can see this right here. This is going to show the number of nucleotides in each fragment. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and it gets larger, larger, larger. So if you remember before, we had different sizes 5, 9, 11, and 12, we would have to arrange the BC fragments on 5, 9, 11, and 12. So I would put one strip there, 5, 9, 11, and 12. What we have is when we're done, we have what's known as a banding pattern. And we can compare the pattern between BC, XYZ, and because each species has its own sequence of DNA, the nucleotide order is different, it's going to give number one different size fragments and number two a different number of fragments. So you can actually see the pattern, which one is closest to BC, and you can make the decision. So now we're done. So this concludes the walkthrough. I trust you'll make a fine decision on which species is most closely related to Botanicurus. I shall see you guys next time.